our Portrait Roadshow is travelling the length and breadth of Britain and Ireland in search of a brand new artistic talent. This week's competition takes place at Cardiff City Hall. Welcome to Sky Art's Portrait Artist of the Year. Our journey to the Welsh capital today began when we invited artists to submit a self-portrait. Three expert judges were given the difficult task of narrowing down the entries and the very best were invited to our specially constructed art gallery and studio in Trafalgar Square in London, to the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum in Glasgow, and to the Royal Dublin Society in Ireland. So today we're in Cardiff, looking for our fourth and last finalist. All four finalists will have their work displayed at the National Portrait Gallery in London. Some of our artists today are professionals, some enthusiastic amateurs, but all have the chance to win what could be a life-changing prize, a £10,000 commission to paint one of today's most successful authors, Hilary Mantel. The portrait will become part of the permanent collection at the British Library. So who's got what it takes to become... Sky Art's Portrait Artist of the Year. Welcome to Cardiff City Hall, where 21 very nervous competition finalists are preparing to undertake the challenge of their artistic career. And some other fabulously talented artists will be joining us here today to give us tips on portraiture in all its forms. But first, let's meet the judges who had the difficult task of selecting today's finalists from the 1850 who entered our competition. Our first judge, Kate Bryan, is Head of Contemporary at the Fine Art Society. A career working at the British Museum and in Hong Kong has introduced her to international worlds and more unusual aesthetics. Our second judge, painter Tai Shan Schierenberg, has entered and won the most important painting competitions and so knows well what our competitors will be going through. Our last judge, Kathleen Soriano, is Director of Exhibitions at the Royal Academy and before that had a distinguished career at the National Portrait Gallery. Now you've only seen the submitted digital entries. Now we're going to see the real thing. What difference will it be? Well, on computers, you're sort of one removed. I think it's like listening to music on a computer, you know, or, or going to a, a live concert. It's much more exciting seeing it in the flesh. Yeah, and I think there's going to be an element of surprise. Some will probably look better in photographs than they do in real life, whereas others, you hope, really sing in the flesh. Yes, and I think you also get that sense of the texture and the depth and the character that really comes through with the final work. So it's going to be a surprise I'm, uh, yes, right now. Yeah. OK, let's go. Okay. This was one we loved. Do you remember when we saw it? It all jumped out at us. She just looks absolutely fantastic. I'm really looking forward to meeting her. It's just such an enigmatic, vibrant painting. We're definitely invited into the scene. Or a sitter. Yeah, aggressive oh, stance. That's an interesting she, idea. She's, she's yeah. playing with the idea of you sitting here being painted by her. Feels like another youthful entrant, I think. Mm. Well, it is a self-portrait. So <laughs> oh, well, yes, sorry, I'm just going by the colours <laughs> and the, um, the attitude and the dress. And he's obviously turned it after he's painted it to get these drips going that way. I like drips. I mean, they can be a bit self-conscious at times, but mm. I do like a bit of paint in this. I hope we get some drips. Yes? Terrible signature. <laughs> do we like signatures or not? No, we not hate really. them like that. Although, funny enough, maybe in this one it works. I'm thinking about tags and graffiti. Mm. Um, so sometimes I think there is an excuse, but I think it has to be an integral part of the composition. What's wrong with a signature on a painting? I just think it's kind of brutal and it just looks a bit naff to me. I always encourage my artists not to. Wow. Wow. Oh, you gave a little gasp then. Well. It's very accomplished, isn't it? I mean, I've never seen one quite less photographic. Yeah. You are mesmerised by it. But if someone needs to talk to him about his signature as well. It's so distracting. But maybe in the case of a hyper-realist painting, it almost you makes it. you need it. Now then, did you imagine that this was as small as it turns out to be? 
Yeah, I mean, we knew it was um, a, a graphic work. We knew that it was a, a print, um, and we thought it was quite good to have that variety. For me, there's something quite sort of mechanical about his process. I wonder how he's going to grapple the sort of unknown face. It would be interesting to watch them work. Yes. Before today's heat to find the last of our four semi-finalists gets underway, the artists have a chance to study the competition. There's such a huge variety um, of different styles, um, and some of them are exceptionally good. I wish I hadn't seen the rest of the portraits because I'm quite intimidated now. To be honest, I've deliberately not looked at anyone else's work just so that it doesn't sort of freak me out when I'm, when I'm in there. I'm just going to try not to think about what anyone else is doing. I'll just do my own thing. I'd like to say that I wasn't ambitious, but I, you know, part of me would quite like to win it. This is just such an amazing opportunity because the prize is to not only paint a famous double Booker Prize winning author, but also to have your piece hung in the British Library, potentially forever. Now you've seen all the self-portraits of the people who are going to be competing today. Have you got favourites? Have you got people you're going to watch? The one who springs to mind is the, I thought the technique was very good and the expression was good. It was the head of the young man with the bolts through it. I thought it was very good. Um, any favourites? I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the woman does who did the fantastic self-portrait in the garden. And also the old mastery red background. He felt like a real professional. I think he knows, knows what he's doing. Yeah, I, I'm keen to see him. Mm. I, but I'm also quite keen to see the young girl uh, putting her makeup on. She could go either way. Yeah. But I'd like to just see how she starts off. It's going to be fun to watch. So you have four hours to paint today. How is that for you? Is that your normal time, short, no, long? No, no, I take weeks to paint. Oh, really? Weeks and weeks, yes. So I'm completely out of my comfort zone. Until now, the artists have no idea who they're going to be asked to portray. Our first sitter in Cardiff is the charity worker and campaigner, Falklands War veteran, Simon Weston. Next, we have a woman who's inspired one of our greatest portrait artists. Lucian Freud's portrait of Sue Tilly, entitled Benefits Supervisor Sleeping, sold for £17.2 million. And our third and final sitter today is Welsh rugby international and TV personality, Gavin Henson. Oh yeah, so the, the judge posing Simon today is Kathleen Soriano, who is the head of exhibitions at the Royal Academy. Right, thank you. Right, Simon, I think the most important thing is that you feel really, really comfortable. You know you're going to be sitting there for quite some time. Yeah. In the name of art, I think I'm going to have to ask you to take your kit off, Gavin, oh. if that's oh. okay, because you do sort of embody the ideal male form and that's what we're doing today. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a sort of very contemporary a take um, on Michelangelo's David. I thought what we'd do is use something that is reminiscent of Freud's studio, but at the same time refer to Sue's quite uh, wild private life. I think the most important thing about this painting that was the sort of long, the faraway look in, in the eyes of the soldier who's going off to war. OK. Is that too high or is it...? That... No, that's fine. Artists, you have four hours to paint your sitters and then your finished work will be judged alongside your self-portrait. You may now pick up your paintbrushes, your charcoal sticks, your pens and your pencils. Good luck, everyone. In previous semi-finals in London, Glasgow and Dublin, the way the artists use these first minutes has often proved to be critical. Some tend to go off in a great hurry, show terrific promise and then fade. Others can take a long time planning and then wish they'd had more time at the end. Well, 
Well, I think it's really interesting at the beginning because you can see how all the different artists are negotiating Simon's face and they're all taking different approaches to how they begin their work. So some are going straight to drawing, others have gone straight to their cameras, but then Toby, for example, he's gone straight to paint. And, you know, someone who was quite nervous beforehand, now that he's been allowed to start painting, is actually quite relaxed and quite confident in those marks that he's making. Toby Hunt has come to compete in Cardiff from his home in Canterbury, where he supplements his income from art by working part-time in a DIY superstore. Toby, I don't want to startle you. I mean, God, you've gone off at a pace. There's people still on their pencil and people doing yeah. grid lines and you look like you've nearly finished. Do you normally go at it like this and uh, just... Yeah, normally I just sort of hit, you know, hit, the, hit it running, really, you know, just... Uh, make a mess, basically, Excellent. and then try and build it up. Oh, I'm loving your flamboyance. <laughs> oh, really? Because at the moment, yeah. it's more it's like you're capturing Simon's though. energy as much really? as anything yeah. else. That's good. Yeah, you can quote yeah. me on that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Kathleen, how did you uh, arrive at this pose for Simon? Well, what I love about this is that Simon really decided about this painting. This is this is the original, I suppose. Yeah, well. by Tiso. This is a picture that he goes back to look at regularly, and it hangs here in Cardiff in the National Museum. Sue Tilly was famously a model for yes. Lucy and Freud. So, what did you bring when you had to pose her? Well, she was talking about how she'd met Lucian, and it came through the sort of party scene in London in the 80s. And I thought, how do we connect her? party life and her working as a model for one of the greatest figurative artists. And so we thought, OK, well, let's get the worn chaise longue or worn sofa, put her on that. And the glitter ball? I'm hoping that the way it refracts the light will add a bit of interest to the background of the painting. OK, you, you posed Gavin. Yeah. today. What, what was the big idea behind that? Well, the big idea really was to think about the ideal male form. Obviously, Gavin's got an incredible physique, he's a sportsman, he obviously works hard to look like that. So we were sort of referencing, a, you know, a Michelangelo sculpture or even a painting, thinking about the, the Renaissance and the classical form. But we did it with a sort of kitsch eye to the contemporary, so we've got this very vibrant set. Just half an hour into the four hours our artists have been given to paint their portraits, we're seeing a huge variety of styles and approaches. At this early stage, anyone could still emerge as today's heat winner of Portrait Artist of the Year. One of the artists who caught the judge's eye early on as showing promise is Nick Lord, who is just 24. He's one of our local competitors who was popped by from just round the corner. The sort of challenge of doing a self-portrait is always quite a hard one because it's so used to sort of looking at other people when you're working. So when looking at yourself, you sort of start to sort of realise sort of different things when you're painting. So it was that sort of challenge was uh, appealing to sort of try and overcome and conquer, I suppose. My day job is, I suppose, I would class myself as a modeler. <laughs> Not a model, but I work for my dad. Um, painting model railways to make them look distressed and old and uh, make them look realistic, basically. Um, so that's what I do when I'm not painting. So I'm painting, but on trains, <laughs> toy trains. I wouldn't say I'm a professional yet, purely because I'm not making enough money to sort of, to live off it as such. When I get to that stage, then I class myself as professional. Um, I, sort of, I tend to specialise in portraiture, but I can, I, do, I can do other things as well, but that is my key element to my work and sort of what sort of inspires me to keep, to keep working is that ex experimentation and sort of exploration of paint and, and the human body. I'm slightly worried by Nick, who's in a world of his own with his earphones on. He's really got very little on the page yet. He's working in pencil, he's quite a graphic artist, so I'm hoping that once he gets his building blocks in place, although it's taken him longer than everyone else, that actually he'll be able to just race through but at this stage, he's quite far behind. Feeling the nerves, I think. Um, so I'm, I'm a bit behind schedule. Um, I wanted to sort of try and get the drawing done in the first hour, but this is the hardest part, so I'm trying to get it all mapped out in proportion. So then when I paint, I can sort of just relax, but then sort of make a bit of mess and uh, have a bit of fun. But um, a lot of people are using oil, whereas I'll be using acrylic, so I can, it dries faster, so I can, uh, I can hopefully smash it out a bit. <laughs>
one of today's competitors, Scott Poschmidt, is a founding member of the Lavender Hill Studios in Battersea, which are dedicated to traditional figurative art. He studied in Florence for 10 years before moving to London. Hi, Scott. How are you? Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Fascinated to see how this is taking shape. I mean, it started out really just completely abstract, just a few mm. lines. Um, and I thought, what's I'm, he doing? That's totally opposite to his style, but obviously you're just really just, placing. Just blocking it out. Yeah. It's quite ambitious. Do you think you're going to get the whole figure done? Um, probably not. <laughs> but, um, but I'll have a focus on exactly. it. Exactly, yeah, yeah, so we know where your head is. The man whose photo real is self-portrait so intrigued the judges at the start is Nicholas Smith. He doesn't have enough time today to do all the detail needed for photorealism, so he's taking quite a different approach. Nick, it's really nice seeing how which aspect of Sue you've all picked, but I really like yours. It's a really sort of grumpy and slightly suspicious look you've got. <laughs> and you've got eye contact, so is she looking in your direction? Yeah, she uh, is. Yes, and also um I don't know if I'll be able to use it, but I also took a photo of her yeah. looking at me, so at the oh, end, really? oh, hopefully right. I'll be able to get some detail on the eyes. I'm really pleased to see how most of them are getting on. Sarah's got actually a very good portrait already begun. Scott's um, a very old master style painter and he recognises he's only going to get the face done, but yet he's got this great composition all planned out. Pamela's brilliant, she's got this whole colour blocking thing going on, it's really vibrant. We don't know how much of that colour we'll eventually see, but I'm glad it's there to begin with. Pamela Engels is another of our artists today whose art is both a passion and a part of their working life. She's a sculptor as well as a painter. My father was a Dutchman, and although I was born and grew up here locally in Old Windsor, studied and taught in England, it was Holland that seemed to call me at one point. And for most of my adult life, I've actually been living in Holland. I returned to my roots almost four years ago now, so I feel very much at home again, actually, after all those years of being away. Wow, look at this one. Ooh, pink. Yeah. My mother at 91, thankfully, is still with us, and so I can enjoy her company, and she enjoys mine as well. And through my sculpting, she's also become very enthusiastic, tried a hand at it, and is sculpting away as happily as I am now. To pay the bills, I am working three days a week, serving coffees and lunches in a cafe in Windsor. And for me, that's a, an important part of my life. I do love mixing with people and being part of the community. My tactics to prepare for the competition, I've decided, is to work on a canvas and just complete it in one day. So I took a photo of Tom Jones, of Stephen Fry and Usain Bolt, and I feel I've really captured something very special in their character. To what extent do you feel that you've reached where you want to go with the face? Oh, that's my last place I go to. Right, okay. Actually, so I am trying just to sort of get a feel of the complete person, but the last sort of concentration I'll be making is to get there. Right. And I'll probably move on to brushes for that. Entrants were allowed to work in any medium, including oils, pastels, charcoal or pencil. One of our competitors chose lino cuttings, in which a sheet of linoleum is carved with a sharp blade, spread with ink and used to create a print. I'm sure everyone says this, but I remember doing this in, in art and crafts yeah. at school with, like, I mean, obviously on a lot more basic level than this. So you, you do this professionally yes. now. So what kind of work do you, would you normally be doing? Uh, not self-portraits generally. No. Or portraits for that matter. I do a lot of pictures of landscapes. Uh, I do oh, lots really? of pictures of donkeys as well. Donkeys? Yes. yes. I kind of have a speciality. <laughs> Donkeys is my speciality. OK. So what are your advantages today, would you say, over the people who are working in, in normal acrylics? I don't think I've got any, really. And is that because of the time the process takes? Partly that. Partly because it could all go wrong at the last minute. And then oh, really? It's gone, if, yeah, if, if how, you, do you, how do you rob out a mistake on a lino cut? So every, every cut, you've got to really make sure you know what you're doing. So there is no margin for error? No. And I won't really know until I've printed it whether it's worked or not. Oh, of course. Thanks. Anyway, I won't keep you any longer, but good luck with it. Thank you. We're just about halfway through the time the artists are allowed for painting. 
Nick is worrying the judges. He's still working on his drawing and looks in real danger of running out of time. Toby, who started so well, seems at risk of overworking his painting and losing the likeness. The standard is high and none of the competitors is showing a clear lead. Anyone could still be declared today's winner of Portrait Artist of the Year. I'm impressed actually to see some really quite heavily worked portraits. Toby and Gregory have produced quite a lot just in this morning. Bit of a danger though for someone like Toby because we really liked it to be going, and I'm worried now that he's got too much time on his hands to potentially play with it too much. It's amazing how quickly a likeness can disappear, how the personality can go if you rework it too much. Gregory next to him has this great lavender palette that he's working with, the background. He's really taken a nod from the hues that Kathleen's picked for the background and they kind of imbue the portrait with this lovely, cool tone, which is quite different to the others, which I think is great. Gregory is another of today's competitors who makes part of his income from his painting. In his case, his passion for art also provides the rest of it. I live in Tiverton in Devon. Living in the southwest is a, is a great place to live um, for an artist. As I've gotten older over the years, I've appreciated it more and more. I'm a singer in two bands, um, and I also like performance and acting. I mean, the truth is, I, I dropped out of the drama school, not, not sure what I was doing. And that's when my girlfriend said to me, well, here's an old box of paints, you know, get painting. So I did, and the next day, she booked me an exhibition at a local museum. She said, well, you, you better get cracking, because uh, you've got three months to do 40 pictures. I started portrait painting from the response that I got from seeing amazing portraits in galleries. When you see a, a piece that really pulls at you, really tugs at you and gives you a physical and emotional response to it. It was that sort of feeling that got me wanting to paint. Oh, I want to do that. I wish that I wish I'd done that. So, you know, that's when I really, really took portrait painting seriously. I've always loved animals ever since I was a child. It's been something that's all throughout my life. And uh, I've been visiting Africa in the last few years and I've painted lots of pictures from there. And I also take people out on art safaris painting wildlife there. I live with a man called Lee, who has learning disabilities. I help him with uh, life skills, the sort of things you, we do day to day that we take for granted, um, and also to help him integrate and live in the community. Yeah, I don't know. A bit of a tiddler, ain't it? Yeah. I worked at a care home for a short while, and um, when it closed, they, they couldn't find him a home. So uh, the authorities uh, asked me if I would take him home for Christmas. And uh, he's been with us for nearly 10 years. <laughs> We just came back from a quick break, yeah. and Nick, who was really struggling, who's this this guy here, yeah. he's got this kind of like fast, loose style, so I thought he would be yeah. blocking it out quite early on. He spent the entire morning just fixated on the eyes, and this kind of like cold, hard pencil drawing the, the one eyes. He's, he's been measuring very carefully yeah, as well. I've yeah. seen him use the ruler and stuff. Exactly. I quite like the fact that he's working on a blue ground. Mm, I mean, mm. that's very beautiful. I like the blue ground, but I was worried about him because I was thinking he's really, really far behind the others. He's just done the eyes, but now he's come back from the break, hopefully fresh. Do you think he's seen how far other people can go? Yeah, yeah. You want to put into second gear. Mm. So exactly. I want to see the drips. They'll, they'll, they'll come along. There's plenty of time. Plenty, plenty of time. time. OK, artists all, you've got just under one hour left. that they're all falling into being specific types of portraiture that I'm already very familiar with and actually whether we really ought to try hard to pick something that is actually very different from what would be expected that maybe is slightly smaller or quieter than the more traditional expected portraits. I did the first test print because I wasn't sure about some things, some areas, so I thought I'd leave them, do a test print first and then work into them. So now I've done my final one colour print. I might do a two colour print. I've done some second prints that just for the shirt to make the shirt blue. The painting competition is not the only reason we've taken over Cardiff Town Hall today. We're open to the public who have been enjoying a whole variety of portrait creation, from sculpture to a man who produces likenesses out of, love it or hate it, toast and marmite. I'm here with toast artist Nathan Wyburn. Yeah. How does that happen to someone that they become a toast <laughs> artist? I got quite bored actually of using everyday materials. Oh, so you were, a, you were yeah. a... Originally sort of graphic portraits and charcoal and all that. Okay. And I read that you either love or hate Simon Cowell, so I thought of Marmite, love it or hate it. 
that was my original portrait, then everything else kind of spiralled. OK. From there, yeah. I like me. Thank you. <laughs> in, um, in carbohydrate form. <laughs> Kate, anybody stormed ahead, they're I getting think, something good. Yeah, I think Scott. I mean, Scott's a pro. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's done yeah, this before. You're a bit allergic to it. Well, I didn't, I didn't like his self-portrait, I have to be honest. It sort of turned me off a bit. Yeah. But actually, when I saw him knocking this out and putting in all his, sort of, his lines, it was really impressive. I mean, he got a really good gauge of all the balance and the harmony and the shape really quickly. Yeah. You know, and I actually, the colour going on is great, really gorgeous. And I'm loving it, even though I don't really want to. He's turned me. OK the woman who's using the very beautiful bright colours. Yeah, Sue. She's got the white yeah. background. Yeah. And it works because the background's white. Mm. I think Gavin will like hers. It's amazing. Why? Well, Why because his he... torso looks really great in all those different colours. His torso looks great anyway. <laughs> but right on the other side is a hyper-realist drawing. Yeah, I mean, he's got this amazing, you know, perspective over the shoulder. He's, he's got a really interesting pose. Yeah. I'm looking forward to see what he can produce. Yeah. Artists. 30 minutes left. Earlier, I thought, I saw this and I thought, well, it, it seemed finished after about yeah. 20 minutes. But it's, it's blossomed and grown. Do you ever worry appreciate. that you might do something that makes it worse rather than better? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know. Well, don't. <laughs> That's my advice. It's getting there, I think. Starting yeah. to get a bit of Where are the shit. drips? Come on, I was promised some drips. I'll put them in the end. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got any got any faves? Well, I I've been going on all day about the liner cutting man. I really <laughs> like that. Oh, I know you and do. he said to me, he <laughs> said, I'm thinking of introducing a colour. And I thought that would be that's such a mistake because I love the stark black and whiteness. Have and then seen... he showed me oh. one of his experiments with like a light blue shirt on Simon. And, and it really worked. I haven't seen that, I'm very I excited. It, there are there's some great stuff. So there's three portraits right next to each other of Sue, so, which are strikingly good. And have you noticed how they've all, well, they're, they're all likenesses of Sue, they've all got a slightly different grumpy expression of <laughs> Sue. It's quite nice how they've honed on a slightly different things about her. I think it's very good. But it, in a kind of conventional manner. And sort of, if you look at, you know, three of Simon's artists right next to each other and the lino cut, it's all very different. Artists, five minutes remaining. They all are very like her, astoundingly like her. Artists, time is up. Please put down all your equipment. Well done. Before the judges select their shortlist and eventual winner, the sitters get to choose one portrait of themselves to take home with them. Incredible. It was worth standing up, I reckon. It's awesome, that is. It's an amazing the angle, yeah. isn't it? There's bits of grey in there as well, is it? <laughs> <laughs> They've all got different things that I like that I can't decide, you know. 
I well, might prefer a dress to Primark from a dress to Gucci, <laughs> although the Gucci dress is better. Yeah. <laughs> Have you narrowed it down a bit? A bit, but it's also difficult. It's kind of between these two. All oh, right, OK. Now, I like this because I like the style of it, but something about this that I really like. Sue looks as though she's attracted to the painting by John Affleck, whose self-portrait caught the attention of the judges at the start. I think it's going to have to be that one that I'm going okay, for well in the end. Let's go. My champion. I'll go for the light one there, Margaret's. Margaret's, the, OK. The one. And what, what is it particularly about? Um, it, it's, it's so light and airy, it, it reflects my personality. I'm, I'm quite a light-hearted, breezy character, even though I've got this reputation of being serious, I'm not. And so, it's still got that lovely deep gaze that you were looking for. Yes, yeah, mm. yeah. Congratulations, Very, Margaret. Thank you so much. We couldn't have had a better model. Fabulous. So I'm afraid I have to ask you to choose your favourite. You've got a lovely choice here. What are you going to go with? Oh, I'm not sure, to be honest. I, I've sort of narrowed it down to these two. I mean, they're different, aren't they? Yeah, this they're very different. This very kind of aggressive, quite yeah. psychological, and this one is really monumental and quite heroic, I think. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it shows the two sides of me as well. <laughs> I, think, I think that one might be a bit too scary for my kids. So I think I go for this one. Okay. Wow. This is the best one. Well done. Yeah, yeah well, well done. Thank you. Great work. Thank you, Gavin. That's, that's brilliant. Thank you. Once again in Cardiff, the judges have been impressed by all the entries. There's going to be some tough talking ahead before we get to announce our winner. This is a great painting. I love the, the texture of the background and the way that colour is picked up throughout it. Really interesting use of tone. I mean, it's not actually a very easy colour to paint with, but you've done a really good job. Thank you very much. I'm happy with what I did today, so um, yeah, we'll, we'll just see what the judges decide. I think you'll love the way, Toby, you sort of leapt in so confidently right at the start with mm. those brushes and started sort of creating an image that we recognise straight away, so congratulations on that bravura. This face is very interesting, you know, it's got a really interesting dynamic to it, and um, uh, because of the scarring and the, you know, the colours. It was a really interesting portrait. It took really long to get going. I wasn't scared. No, were she? Really? Oh, well, then, I just, and then the eyes came through and I kind of suddenly realised you're really on track. Started off um, very stressful, it took a while for me to get my image out, um, but then the sort of painting sort of seemed to just develop in the last 45 minutes, so it was a bit sort of rushed, but it, it, I tend to work quite well with sort of a bit of pressure. It's beautiful the way you put the paint on. It's very unusual. I think mm. it's a very surprising piece of work. Well done. Thank you. Pamela, this is a really vibrant, upbeat painting. It was great when you started out and just filled that canvas with the pink and the orange, and yet you've managed to retain a sense of that colour by actually even changing the background to green, which you said sort of reminded you of the field that he was playing on. Yes. I just hope they see my spontaneity in there and the use of colour and that I got a bit of his soul, I think, that I got a bit of Gavin's soul in there. This is a fabulously strong, sort of very romantic portrait, so I'm sort of not that surprised that uh, Gavin chose it as the one that uh, he'd like to take home and look at on a regular basis. I'm very happy that Gavin's picked my picture. I'm really thrilled with that, so I, I wasn't expecting that, so that's a really nice way to, if the day ends now, it's, it's good. <laughs> beautiful colours, beautiful, beautiful colours. Artists, thank you, and very well done. Can you all now leave the room so that the judges can get on with drawing up their shortlist? I like the composition, but I don't think it's very strong. No, this for me feels like Superman. I can totally understand why Gavin picked it. I'm not convinced by any of them, actually. OK. I it's would actually... put Pamela in there. I would. I just don't think it's interesting. Should we around. hold her in our mind she and could, then come yeah. back? OK, oh, if you insist. No, no. 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 This is just, just not experienced enough. This is, away, this is a little gem. It's mm. really refreshing and there's also something about her face there. These, these oh, no, no. guys are missing that. I think this is a very insightful psychologically. I love it. I mean, in terms of the gaze again. of the day, he's nailed it. I mean, it's beautiful, it's so direct, and it's just a tiny little nuanced knowing glance that he must have got really early this morning. 
what people won't understand is why we're no. not raving about this well, one. I'm going to rave about it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's raveable. It stands by itself. Yeah. I think the lilac really holds its own. Can I just say, though, this is a great selection. They really engage. Now, the judges have drawn up a short list of three artists. When I read out your name, will you please step forward? James Green. <laughs> Nick Lord. <laughs> and Toby Hunt. Okay, well, the three short-listed artists, please stay behind to tell the judges a bit more about their paintings. As for the rest of you, thank you so much for today, and congratulations on getting this far. It's been tough to get down to a final three, and now the judges are having even more trouble choosing their favourite. So they talk to the artists to help them to make up their minds. So, Nick, in your self-portrait, I was rather under the impression that you'd put sort of sellotape and paint it on top of it, and you've managed to get that same technique here. How do you do that? Um, it's the way I make my paints. I use, um, I use the pigment and then I mix it with more of the copolymer emulsion to sort of uh, thicken it up, and then I just layer it and layer it and layer it, and that allows me to sort of create that sort of glossy, glossy sheen and then also build up the texture. So you get that lovely sensation of wash, but yet there's still mm. that great depth yeah. to it. Yeah, definitely. And how about the time? Did, if you had longer, would you, uh, mm. how would it develop? Um, yeah, I'd, uh, I'd spend more time concentrating on the detail, the sort of the main features, so the eyes, nose and mouth, and uh, I would have just sort of uh, just spent more time tightening that up and sort of... Uh, Building it up. Yeah. But you'd have left that it's sort still, of sense of yeah. looseness. Yeah, the sort of okay. the looseness, yeah. Great. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers, thank you. Hi. Um, a really strong bit of portraiture, yeah. I thought, yeah, it's just... And very inventive with the way you've... Uh, you worked your way across his face. It was, uh, it was impressive watching you. Uh, you kind of sprinted out of the blocks, yeah. and then you sort of controlled it. And uh, did it run as smoothly as you hoped? I mean, it looks very complete. Yeah. Um, well, I was aiming really for kind of physical solidity of the figure, you know, yeah. because Simon is a very, you know, big guy. Yeah. So I wanted to kind of get that kind of weight across. Mm. What I love is just that, that dash of red in the eye. It's absolutely yeah. fantastic and it sort of anchors that side of the face. It yeah. actually really needed it. And if you take it away, it's missing it. Mm. And I, th I really love the way you've pulled back out. I mean, this, the body really references the face, but it does it in its own unique way. There's just a, there's a really nice harmony there. Yeah. Okay. James, it's fairly safe to say of all the people working with lino cut today, yours was the best. <laughs> <laughs> But actually, you've captured this fantastic expression, which is what I really loved about this. So there's a real brevity to it, but there's, the expression is there, and it's been there all day. You mentioned that you sometimes sort of bring different elements together in one. Yeah, yeah. I spend a lot of time composing images before I put them on the lino. I like to be confident. Thank you. The artists are asked to withdraw while the judges discuss their final verdict. We're minutes away from announcing today's winner. I'm really, really interested to see what he does next. I think he's got an unusual technique and it feels very fresh and contemporary. And I'm not that bothered about the likeness. I think the likeness is there, but I think it's also a really interesting painting. Yeah, no, I agree. I like that freshness about it too. And I like the, as, he was, as Gavin was saying, that sort of aggression in the stance as well. Yeah. And I think he's, in a way, I think out of all of those portraits, he's captured him more than the others. Yeah. Even actually without the chest, yeah. which is interesting, you know, that he's still got that sort of monumentality again. I must say, I think this one is really punchy and powerful. This just feels a little bit over-laboured. Yeah. Um, I, it feels like something I've seen many, many times. For me, I just think once you've got past the surface texture, is there really a penetrating gaze there? I'm not sure that there is. OK, let's keep that. I mean, this is, this is a little gem. It's beautiful in its brevity and also in its inventiveness. I'm glad he was in the final three. Uh, yeah, I'm I, think, I think he definitely needed yeah. to be in the final three. He earned his place here. So we need to persuade you? Yeah. No, no, I mean... What can we do? Uh, the judges have reached their decision. The winner of the Cardiff Heat of the Sky Arts Portrait Artist of the Year is... Nick Lord.
congratulations to James and Toby, but congratulations on getting this part. feels awesome uh, hasn't really sort of properly sunk in yet but there was so many other sort of good pieces of work there so it was it was tough it was yeah so I was pretty pretty excited and pretty shocked at the same time so yeah when they made the final announcement I was very happy with that I think I think they made the right choice his work really had that kind of dynamic with the paint that he was using and it looked uh, you know really modern and vibrant and a really good portrait and a very good likeness I'm excited now, now that I've sort of had a taste of working from life again and sort of uh, been around other people whilst working, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Going to practice some more, but definitely, definitely looking forward to it. So that's it. We've scoured Britain and Ireland and have found our four finalists. Tune in next week when they'll be meeting for the first time and undertaking a very special challenge. Louis Morris, who won in London, Ewan McClure, who won in Glasgow, Selina Mowat, who was the winner in Dublin, and Nick Lord, who won today in Cardiff, are all off to Paris to learn from the work of some of the great masters and to paint a portrait of model and author Sophie Dahl. All in their quest to become the Sky Arts Portrait Artist of the Year. <laughs>